BK Academy of Chess presents a game from the archives of Joe Chino Greco. He is renowned for recording some of the first chess games known, 77 in total. Some believe these games were not actually played but were compositions to highlight opening traps. He studied the Jaoko piano and published his analysis in the form of short games such as the following, demonstrating a very instructive checkmating pattern. The Jaoko piano begins with the moves, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. The Jaoko piano, where white plans to dominate the center, and to attack black's king. However, the game continued with 4. Castle, knight f6, rook e1, castle, c3, this is all book theory but now things start getting interesting. After queen e7, white puts the question to black with the move d4, and black strikes first with e takes d4, and before taking the pawn, white attacks the knight with e5, and after knight g4, white supports e pawn with c takes d4, and white is now happy. Right? The material is equal, white is dominating the center, and its development is on par with black's, both sides needs at least three moves to connect its rooks. Three moves for black because the dark square bishop needs to retreat, and the light square bishop needs two moves to develop because bishops cannot jump over pieces. However, white has problems. With a deeper analysis of the squares of white's pieces, it becomes evident that black's position is under attack, an indication to look for tactical combinations. However, this requires some dynamic thinking, thinking outside the box of positional play. Instead of thinking of positional ideas such as completing the development, fighting for control of the center, etc., attention needs to be placed on how to capitalize on the weaknesses that become evident. This may require placing pieces in odd positions, making sacrifices, leaving pieces unprotected, and so forth. This is the difference between positional thinking and dynamic thinking. Positional play is knowing ideas and themes such as how and where to move and exchange the pieces, whereas dynamic play requires concrete thinking of precise computations. It's not easy, you are not always going to find the right moves, and time is of the essence. You have to learn how to pick your battles, based on your style of play. In this position, the game is still young, but at the grandmaster level finding the right move could be very critical. Notice how white's center is not adequately supported. The bishop is hanging and the pawns are on critical squares, squares with the same amount of attackers as defenders. Whereas Aaron Nimzovitz teaches to always overprotect your centerpieces. Also notice the vulnerability of the f2 pawn. In addition, white has allowed black knight to remain posted up in front of the castle. Malik Kachian teaches us to always address pieces that cross the river. They must be pushed back or taken care of in some way. So how should black play? Pause the video if you need time. Black continue with knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen h4, sacrificing its knight to add pressure against white's castle. The incentive to sacrifice the knight may have been from noticing white's weak f7 pawn, not only was the f7 pawn on a critical square, it also had additional pressure via the indirect attack by black's bishop. And to make matters worse, this square is part of white's castle protecting the king. In return for the sacrifice, Black was able to gain the tempo needed to bring its queen into the attack against the f7 pawn, and now the h7 pawn is hanging, and white's centerpieces are still on critical squares and it's not clear how white can defend all of these weaknesses. According to the chess program, Fritz, Black has the advantage in this position. In other words the compensation was worth the sacrifice. However, Black has to convert the advantage and that's not always easy. But the question is, how is white going to defend? White played a very interesting move. Knight f3, not the best move, because now black has made in 3. However, it is interesting because white has good chances of escaping with the advantage if black cannot find the maiden 3. Pause the video to see if you can find the checkmate. So if you were playing black what move would you make? Okay, let's make this easier. How should black take the f2 pawn, with the bishop, knight, or queen? The first move to the mate in 3 is queen takes f2, but notice that taking with the bishop would only give black a slight advantage, and all other moves would give white the clear advantage. So knight f3, was not the best move by far as it leads to mate in 3, however, it's an aggressive way to defend as it is tricky, giving white good chances. 
There are other moves that would have been safer for white to play but with less of a chance of gaining the advantage. Now after king h1, if black cannot find the mate in 2, again white will have good chances. So what is the combination? Black will have to sacrifice the queen. And will mate with the knight. Now do you see it? The answer is queen g1, knight takes g1, and black mates with knight f2. With a smothered mate, a mating pattern that often gets overlooked. Thanks for tuning in to BK Academy of Chess, where together we build, and over the board we even the score.